Hi everyone, it's the English Simmer here, and if you've seen any of my early access creator sim videos, you've probably heard me say a lot in the past, you know, masculine sims don't get that much, they definitely don't get as much as the feminine sims do, and that is definitely a running trend in The Sims 4. It has been since it came out way back in 2014, it's still the same to this day. The last few packs have definitely got better. I don't sympathise with kits all that often, but I will say kits actually does it very very well but with masculine sims feeling as if they don't ever get as much as the feminine sims and that also doesn't just mean the actual number of assets that they get but kind of the different styles and colors patterns all of those things just doesn't seem to be as fleshed out and I know I hear a lot of people saying in the community it's because masculine fashion in real life like isn't that fleshed out there's not as many different styles for masculine as there are for like feminine styles. I slightly disagree. I genuinely think if the team pushed layering, cuts, playing around with fashion a little bit more when it comes to like masculine fashion trends, I genuinely think we could have as a diverse catalogue in Creator Sim for masculine tag stuff as we do for feminine tag stuff. But today I basically wanted to go over how I actually style my masculine sims. Now even though I've wanted to make this video for a while, I I didn't know the best way to go about it so I think I'm just gonna set it up basically going through some of these like masculine sims outfits. I'm not gonna talk about like what every single pack every single item is from but I figured you lot could kind of use it as sort of a lookbook. If you want to request where any single asset comes from feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Some of them will actually have custom content on them but I will say a lot of my towny makeovers recently which a lot of these sims are have been using an awful lot of EA content. So we're gonna start off with the group that I lovingly refer to as the daddies first of all and that's because I actually really really take inspiration whilst I'm dressing my sims of their careers, their age, whereabouts they live. Obviously in The Sims 4 you can really travel between like any world at any given time but where they live actually plays a huge role on the type of fashion that your sims are going to be wearing. Like I know that we have the hot and cold weather outfits but you still kind of want your like everyday wear, your formal wear to also represent like the weather, the climate and I think it's really important to keep all of that in mind. Also their hobbies. I feel like the activities that my sims actually do in their spare time, what they get up to like with their families, whether they're into cooking, fishing, maybe they're into to fashion and photography definitely also plays a massive role in the fashion choices that I personally choose within the game. So right here we have Eric Lewis. This is my tiny makeover of him. I honestly can't remember what traits or aspiration he had like from the get-go as his like EA default but in my personal game he wants to be a mansion baron. He's materialistic, gluttonous and also self-assured and in my game I like to think that he is a doctor. So I've dressed him like a little bit suave. He obviously very much wants to be wealthy and I feel as if his fashion sense kind of has that like luxurious style to it. He enjoys going skiing, he likes cooking, he likes mixology but he does certainly have a hatred for snowboarders because he thinks that skiing is the better sport and so his style kind of just represents that for me a little bit. He He's very well put together. He actually uses a lot of neutral colors, which I've definitely been feeling that vibe more recently. I will say when we go through these sims, you're definitely going to be able to see my personal preferences because obviously fashion is like constantly moving. And I, I mean, I say that I'm wearing like the brightest trousers right now, but I've also been really getting into like more beige tones and like earthy tones. And that's something that I've really been feeling recently. So I will 
say a lot of my sims when I'm kind of liking a style I'll sort of like draw that in as you can see these two have both been wearing loafers Guess who's also been wearing a bunch of loafers That's kind of why I group these sims together because yeah, they're all classed as like daddies some of them even Grandfathers some of them have no kids at all, but they're still in like beekeeping age range and some of them are more suave than others obviously Dennis has more of like a classic like I guess what you could categorize as like grandpa vintage wear which I really really like but still has that like suave-esqueness to him like he doesn't just go for comfort over style whereas Bob is a lot of comfort over style Bob is just like dad core to me in The Sims 4 but again I have like Jeffrey Langrab who is also dad core but in my game he's like a uni lecturer so again I've kind of gone for that like more relaxed like tuck shirts and like smart jeans whereas Bob is more of like the home comfort dad you know you will come home and there will be this amazing smell of like cookies baking in the oven which means that he is of course the dad who loves to barbecue and I feel like that is really shown off by his fashion I mean for his party wear he's wearing a bowling shirt if that isn't dad core I don't know what is maybe I'm saying that as a person who rocked many a crop dad shirt. He likes just simple t-shirts with logos on. He likes socks and sandals. He's not a loafers guy. He's more about being comfortable and also slightly showing off his personality. That's another thing that I want to say. I feel like simmers are sometimes scared of colour, which I personally don't know how we can be scared of colour when we play The Sims 4. I feel like The Sims 4 has a lot of bright, like, contrasting stuff specifically in create a sim and I'm actually a really big fan of that like I said I love having like statement pieces but I also like tying that in with like more neutral tones for some of the outfits going a little bit more muted Christopher I obviously see as like a really young dad who a lot of the older ones are like oh my goodness like how do you look so young and like how do you keep so fresh and it's genuinely because I kind of dress them in that like younger skewing style of being like a young adult again that likes the sort of comfort but likes to brighten up a lot of his outfits also I went for an awful lot of statement pieces for him because in my eyes these two are both little nerds like they have their own gaming room they both work in programming I'm fairly sure and I definitely wanted to bring their careers sort of into the way that they dress and I feel like I do that with a lot of my sims Take George Cahill, for example. Obviously, he was shipped in Strangerville. He lives in the plane crash. So for his style, I went for something completely different. Pieces that I don't ever really use in the game outside of a sort of story that I want to tell. Like, I want him to look as if he's still trying to work on his plane, even though it's absolutely decimated. His formal wear is obviously just his old military uniform, with all of his medals because he's like pretty decorated and he really does just still kind of scream military even though he is very obviously like a retired military man. People say this all the time like they will say like oh you can tell that like a sim is in your style or that you've created them and I feel like sometimes we as simmers are kind of scared of that because obviously you can definitely have the same face symptoms which basically means that your sims look alike to one another. I feel like I've got out of that box with masculine sims. I feel like my feminine sims do sometimes look very similar and have like similar features. Whereas my more mask leaning sims, I really feel like comfortable and confident with making them. I feel like I'm on the unpopular side of that. I feel like most people are comfortable making feminine sims in The Sims 4, just from like what I see of the community. While sometimes I lean on the same stuff, like right now we have three very much like jock driven sims. If they were an Animal Crossing character, they would be jocks. We have Darling Walsh, who I usually dress Darling very sporty. I feel like they are very much into basketball. They are very much into their music. They kind of like keeping themselves to themselves outside of their friendship group in which they are very, very close with their friendship group. Now, Darling, I did make over ages ago. So I used a lot more custom content on 
Darling than I did a lot of my other sims that we've gone through. That is also because Darling is non-binary to me, but definitely dresses more skew towards the masculine side of fashion with like silhouettes. And I will say the Sims 4 definitely isn't the best when it comes to that. Obviously, if you put an outfit that was made for the opposite frame on a Sim, then sometimes it can look super clunky. The crotch can go like very inwards. It definitely limits your options a lot. In recent packs, they've got a little bit better at this. They kind of make clothes to fit both frames. I feel as if custom content doesn't do that quite as badly as official EA content does. So that I feel is why I've used a lot of custom content. And yeah, I might have used some like same assets between my sporty sims. So this is like darling style. And then if we go over to Dirk Dreamer, who is a Sims 2 sim, I wanted to make him super sporty. Yeah, they're wearing the same top, but it looks completely different on the both of them. That's down to the color palettes that they chose, but also just like how I actually link it up with the other assets of the outfit where Darling had like quite skinny, tight fitting trousers. He has more like baggy length trousers and also usually has like a statement piece. I really like this about Dirk Dreamer. He does like a lot of color matching. So obviously you've got like the gold with the glasses. Don't be afraid to accessorize, throw on a beanie, throw on earrings, nose piercings, nail polish, bracelets, watches. I accessorize the heck out of my boys. And I feel like that just makes the characters a little bit more interesting, if I'm being completely honest, because the team kind of play it safe with fashion an awful lot. I feel like accessorizing definitely helps you tell those stories a little bit more. It shows you the Sims interests a little bit more and can kind of just like encapsulates all of those things that I already talked about in what I actually try to show with my Sims fashion choices. And I don't really mind having those items that I use a lot. Like I never am really gonna look at a Sim who's walking past me in the street and be like, oh, this Sim has the same coat on as this other Sim because one, that happens in real life. That's realistic. People have the same type of fashion. So I would say don't be afraid to kind of lean on those assets that you know are your favorites and that you know fit your Sims really, really well. So when it comes to the packs that I always use for my more masculine fashion, Growing Together is definitely up there. I know it's quite new, but I feel like Growing Together gave us so, so many good staples. For example, this hoodie right here. You better believe I have used this hoodie so much since we got it recently. Honestly, the whole of growing together for masculine creator sim was impeccable. The sims did so, so well. I feel like it was also super accurate to like real life right now, which I feel like fashion doesn't hit very often in The Sims 4. Obviously, packs are in development so, so far in the past that when it actually comes out, it can feel quite outdated. That has not been the case recently for kits and also for some of the expansion packs that we've had. Ancient Arrivals, absolutely a staple. If you are like me and do sometimes prefer the more neutral, earthy color palettes, you need Ancient Arrivals. It's also really good for those like more suave sims who like to dress up a little bit. I know you're all just thirsting after my Akira makeover right now. You know what? I get it. Akira is another one who I used an awful lot of custom content on because again, we kind of don't have that androgynous looking stuff within The Sims 4 officially. I talked about Get Famous most recently in a lot of the videos where I talked about like hidden swatches or swatches that you forgot existed in The Sims 4 Create a Sim. I also also talked about city living a lot in those videos. Both of those packs are absolute staples when it comes to masculine fashion for me. I absolutely love the way that both of those packs look. I think the masculine CC is incredible. City living is actually one of the only times where I've actually felt like the team have pushed the boat out when it comes to masculine cuts and fashion. Taking different cultures as inspiration, I think city living is absolutely incredible. 
incredible. I still lean on it every single day. Cottage living for your more comfy, cozy sims who like to relax and chill at home. I actually wanted to talk about these lot because these are all kind of my more artsy sims. Salim is a writer. I feel like Gunther is super into photography and poetry. We have Diego Lobo, who I personally see as a dream home decorator. He is my interior designer. We have Morgan, who honestly just like non-binary icon. Love them so much. Androgyny is at its peak with Morgan Ember. We have Faz, the flower arranger, who lives in the wedding world. And then we also have Mark from Strangeville, who I just feel is like classic, like artist. Throws, paints it, canvases, dresses so, so fun. But even though they're all artsy, they all still have their own like very significant style. So Gunther is kind of your more like sad boy poet. Not gonna lie, I did take an awful lot of inspiration from Matthew Mercer when it came to Gunther Munch because I was like, you know what? I can't imagine Gunther playing like D&D. &D. Like he'd super be into Baldur's Gate right now. Are you fucking kidding me? He would be romancing Asterion to the high heavens. I also use eco lifestyle a fair amount. I feel like eco lifestyle really gets looked over when it comes to creator sim, but actually very, very good for creator sim. I really enjoy it. A lot of the swatches as well I really enjoy in eco lifestyle. Discover Uni, honestly, one of the best when it comes to create a sim. I say it all the time, Discover University really added in some incredible basics specifically for masculine sims. Discover University, I feel, changed the trajectory of create a sim in The Sims 4. I feel like they just stepped up their create a sim game so, so much more when Discover University came out and I will always be thankful for her. I've already talked about the jeans that were included in Snowy Escape. But again, it's kind of that more like comfort at home. Definitely really, really good for your kind of more sporty sims and also people who wear like streetwear a little bit more. And finally, high school years. Now high school years, I will say it tends to like trend a little bit lower when it comes to age, but I think you can definitely still get away with it for even like fully grown adults and elders, but definitely like young adults. I feel like it kind of fills the gap between like teenagers and young adult, especially like if you go to uni and stuff like that. Again, high school years, I was really, really impressed with actually how accurate the creator sim was to real life fashion at the minute. Like it definitely didn't feel like it was delayed or outdated by the time that that dropped. I haven't included Island Living because a lot of it is obviously very culturally relevant to Sulani, but these denim shorts right here, oh my God, they are one of my go-to assets ever for any male sim. So there we have it. These are just kind of like some different sims, some different pieces. You can see that these dream home decorator trousers, like I've used these on so many sims, but because I've used them in different colors when it comes to like their color palettes and what I feel like they would wear and the stuff that they would put together, they still feel different in the outfit. So really, really just do not be afraid to have those items that you lean on that you know you like in Create a Sim. Don't like stray away from them. Don't be like, oh, I need to make this Sim different from the last. So therefore I can't have them wearing the same thing because the way that you style that specific item can look so different. Mark obviously accepts accessorizes to the all nines. Like he is literally decked out in so many different earrings, bracelets, watches, piercings. He just loves accessorizing. And that's kind of how he shows his personality off within the game, as well as very, very colorful outfits. Whereas some of the others, especially where I've used those dream home decorator trousers have been way more neutral and like, oh, like, don't look at me. I don't really want to stick out all that much. Whereas Mark is on the the complete opposite end of the spectrum. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it gave you some inspiration as to how you can actually play around with Create a Sim and different assets. If you do have any questions about any certain pieces that I've used, I might not be able to track down CC. I know, I'm sorry. Some of them do actually have the CC like creator written on them. Others unfortunately do not. But I will definitely try my best to let you know 
especially if they are like official EA assets. I don't want to gatekeep these items from you. Are you kidding me? I want everyone's sims to look absolutely flawless. Not that I'm saying that my sims look absolutely flawless, but I am pretty proud of a lot of their fashion choices. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope it didn't just feel like me narrowing on. If you use any of these tips to style any of your masculine sims anytime soon, please like tag me over on Twitter. I also think that's a really big thing. Like don't be afraid to take inspiration from real life. Don't be afraid to take inspiration from other simmers. Play around with those colors, patterns, accessories, all of that. Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate you all very, very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see any other Create a Sim dedicated videos, please do not hesitate to let me know down in the comments below and I will speak to you all in my next one. Bye now.